collaboration's really important. Mm. We always want to sell local products yeah. and have a local offering. Welcome to Island Influencers, where we share stories of successful business owners, experienced professionals, entrepreneurs and community leaders based or with influence in the Isle of Man. This podcast is brought to you by Thornton Chartered Financial Planners, because great financial planning has the power to change your life. Now here's your host, Chartered Financial Planner, Sharon Sutton. So welcome to this week's Island Influences and my guest this week is Jana Hosthaus, Managing Director of Robinsons. Robinsons was established in 1886 as a small market stall and has evolved over five generations into one of the Isle of Man's best known companies. Having taken over from her father John, Jana is now excited to be taking the family business into the future. She's worked in the business since 2002 and has been involved in all areas over the years. She loves to stay involved talking to customers and they clearly treat their team and customers as they wish to be treated themselves. As the only female director, Jana talks candidly to me about how getting to this position took lots of hard work and dedication. No two days are the same. And I think that's especially true during COVID. So listen to how she manages her work-life balance whilst raising two boys and how you can learn from your mistakes and give everything a go. So here's my conversation with Jana Hostas in episode 28 of Island Influences. Welcome, Jana Hostas. Thank you for having me. Yeah, and it's from uh, it's you know it's great to have you on the program on Island Influences. Thank you for being a guest. So here we are, are now in September, and the kids have just gone back to school. Yay! <laughs> Pressure's taken off a yes, little bit, isn't but it? it is a bit, yeah. Because we've just come off the back of uh, the Island Food Festival. I guess you were a bit busy, were you? Yeah, so we kind of took a different concept this year um, and just had the fish market there. Yeah. So we had the fish van, which was um, selling kipper baps, queenies, and then we had the new smoker there. We have a portable yeah. smokehouse. It's portable, gosh. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, so they were smoking the salmon and the yeah. people could buy the sides and then we had like a little pop-up stall. Yes. But it was um, incredibly, incredibly busy. Well, the weather was brilliant, wasn't it? And there's nothing else to do. No. <laughs> What no, else was there to well, do? You can't go anywhere other, yeah. than, other than Guernsey. Yeah, yeah, but um, <laughs> the guys were, you know, they were amazing. And actually talking to them this morning, I said, um, would they change anything? And for them, I think it was a little bit too busy. Yeah. Um, they found they were kind of rushing. There was always a big queue of people waiting for food rather than talking to the people how they yeah. normally would do. And, you know, getting people to understand why to buy local salmon. Yeah, um, it's a difficult, over. difficult balance, isn't it? To, yeah. to get when you've got to do that and you've got to, you know, you want to promote the selling. local as well yeah. and to yeah. sort of tell the story with it. So it was interesting from their perspective, whereas I thought they would have preferred to have just been busy, get the food out as much as possible. But no, no. they found it just a little bit too busy, but we can't complain. No, <laughs> when you fish the fish shop, I'm glad you mentioned it. It's one of my favourite places to go in. When, oh, whenever you go up you. to Valapadic, um, to, to Bal- you've got the back and you see Jordan and the boys. Yes. And oh. uh, my brother-in-law does quite a lot of fishing and it all goes straight to, to them. Yeah. And I, we, we never see it. Um, <laughs> and it's a few most beautiful, fresh stuff. And yeah. You have to sort of, it's like secret squirrels club. Have you got yeah. any of that fishing? <laughs> oh, yeah, okay then. <laughs> yes. yeah, they're great, the guys. And Jordan and Jay did a demonstration on filleting fish. and Brilliant. They're such characters and they, they love it they absolutely loved being kind of on the stage with yeah. chris franklin the compare and yeah you know these guys are proactively wanting to do that we don't ask them to do it they'll always be out searching for things to do and talking to the customers and it's great yeah well there's a saying isn't there if you um, if you love what you do you never do a day's work in your life yeah that's true yeah. I'm ready to retire now, though, after COVID. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why don't you tell us, um, cause go, let's go back in time a bit. Let's, let's, let's go back to right to, um, well, where you, where you grew up. And when I mean, your name is, is it's not the, uh, the typical Manx name now, is it? So, no. So Hosthaus is Dutch. Yep. My, um, my dad's father's Dutch. Um, he came over to the Isle of Man with the Navy, right. uh, the Dutch Navy, years and years ago, and met my grandmother, who is a Robinson. Right, OK. So it was her her grandmother that was the original Robinson Mary Robinson um and then when my nana and papa kind of got married etc they took over the business and then the four boys which is my dad and my three uncles um grew up obviously within Robinson's in Strand Street and then three of the boys came back to take the business over yeah so kind of for me and my sisters and my cousins we've all grown up in Robinson's and watched the business develop yeah family of grocers yeah, exactly. Brilliant. <laughs> so which one of you is going to go into politics then, like Mrs Thatcher? <laughs> 
I'm argumentative. <laughs> oh, there you go. You could be the next prime yes. minister. <laughs> I wouldn't have the patience. You know, <laughs> oh God. Talk, I just like things done. I'm the typical middle child, just likes perfection. First time round. But... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so I'd be a bit too awkward, I think. Yeah, that's at all. So you um so you you grew up in, in the Isle of Man. You yes. went to where did you go to school? I went to um Murray's Road and Balaquail and then to King Williams. Right, and I okay. finished there. Um and when I finished my A levels, um turned around to my parents with my hundred pounds Christmas money and booked a one way ticket around the world you as a not. deposit, yes. <laughs> um and I can remember <laughs> mum and dad just saying, Well, we're not funding it. I mean we've always been brought up in a world where we work we've always worked in the shops my parents worked so myself and my older sister Katie um were close in age we were sort of shoved in the shops at the age of seven working on the tills brushing the floors and I said fine I'll go and get a job and um I worked at Manx Telecom launching the pay-as-you-go mobile phones on the Isle of Man right okay so I used to have to go out and sell those and mm-hmm. then I was commission-based paid went off traveling for the rest of that year for about 11 months 10 months yeah where did you go all around the world, everywhere, literally Great. everywhere, which would be amazing to do now, wouldn't it, when we can't travel? Yeah, I, keep, I keep having to pinch myself because I forget. I know. Yeah, what, oh, Just no, to we get can't. on a plane, yeah. <laughs> it would be amazing. Yeah. And then went off to Sheffield Hallam University when I came back. Right. Um, so it's like a gap year, really. Yeah. yeah, Yeah. which now having children, I can see why my parents were petrified of me going off at 18 years old, but actually... It kind of made me realise I wanted to work. I really wanted to work hard and kind of be able to travel as I got older and do the things like this with my own kids. So came back from university, did the first year of university, loved it, Mm -hmm. but I just wanted to work. I wanted to earn money. I wanted a career. And I actually came back to the island and I think it's kind of in me to come into the business, had to put a business proposal together to come into the business which was going back then and what is now the chinese oriental supermarket we have yeah cool road yeah sure and then kind of over the last 20 years i've gone through all different areas of the business and i think being a family member it's not easy going into a family business and people presume it's easy and it's put on a plate for you but my god it's not (laughs) Well, that makes you tougher and more resilient, presumably. God, you have to be. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you gosh. have to be. Yeah, so the areas of, of that, I mean, what, what parts have you... Um, I got your mark all over. What's, what's been the best one that you've Ooh. you've enjoyed developing? Because there's quite a few angles, quite a few strands to it, isn't it? Yeah, isn't there? there's everything. So obviously our, uh, our business started as a greengrocer's. Mm. Um, and then about 40 years ago, we built a partnership with ShopRite. So we have yes. our own staff and our yeah. own franchise within the ShopRite stores, which is the um, fruit and vegetables. And then over the years, we've kind of expanded out to the food service, which is your hotels, your restaurants, your cafes, your, um, your schools, for example, care homes. So wherever you go on the Isle of Man to eat, the majority of food has come from ourselves. Yeah. Um, started as fruit and veg, and it's expanded into every bit of produce frozen foods yogurts cleaning products bin bags everything so it's a one-stop shop for the food service yeah and then obviously with covid and during covid yeah um, you guys did an amazing service because we couldn't nobody could really go out no and if you had to go to a shop the two meter rule and queuing up i mean that seems like such a distant memory now but it it could come back so quickly and you guys reacted as far as i can see so fast yeah we had to i mean we employ 200 people and you know we kind of very early on heard about covid but i don't think did any of us expect it to hit us and affect our own lives probably not Um, and i was meant to go out to a conference i think it was on the sunday night and I sit on a board for Unitas, which is one of the biggest buying groups in Europe. Yeah. And Darren, the MD, rang me and said, do not get on that plane because the conference is not going to go ahead in the board meeting tomorrow. Um, COVID has hit the UK. We can't go ahead with the conference. Wow. So literally it was like, we need to now think of a strategy. The f- hospitality sector is going to be shut down. So it was Mother's Day weekend when oh, yeah, it was. the chief minister then announced, stay at home, don't eat out. So everybody's orders were kind of cancelled, etc. Gosh, that must have um, been a major hit, actually. Yeah, yeah, it was. You know, the restaurants and everyone, hotels, put all their orders in, yeah. all the products are ready to go out. And then 
yeah, it was just kind of a, well, I suppose it's, it's fight for survival, isn't it? You know, you can't just sit and do nothing. In theory, we would have probably had about 80 people we'd have had to have just laid off straight away when the hospitality sector was shut down. So we decided, you know, let's launch some kind of care package initially, which was for people who had to isolate the elderly, um, people who who didn't have family to maybe shop for them and get a very quick model out there onto the website, which is what we did. And that took off fantastically straight away and it was doing probably about 3,000 deliveries a week to people's homes and then quite quickly we just decided to open up our full catering website to the public yeah and set up home deliveries yeah which then just yeah snowballed snowballed and you know people might see it as oh all the retailers and this industry did really well well actually we didn't no. You, you know your overheads go up your yes. costs go up don't they but yeah you just had to keep people in jobs but also it was the worry of keeping everyone safe as well yeah absolutely i think pr- probably for i mean being a member of the general public the uh the biggest concern is that there's the food's going to stop and, and yeah. the amount of deliveries that you guys had was just amazing yeah i mean there have been kind of supply issues running up to covid and since covid um which is to do with like the manufacturers Hellman's mayonnaise as an example right they couldn't get the plastic we sell big five litre ten litre tubs there was no plastic coming in from China okay. so the manufacturers couldn't provide that but you know we've got a really good buying team um, we've got really good suppliers ourselves and a network so you can kind of jump onto the next thing mm-hmm. but yeah I mean we're so lucky on the Isle of Man we yeah, have had sure zero are. social distance since was end of May early june i think it was about june the 15th i think yeah so so. everyone can eat out and enjoy themselves and socialize and yeah it's been great yeah what's kind of not really returned i suppose that the hotels haven't really returned to yeah and we're kind of we're trying to say to government at the minute as a business ourselves you know what about encouraging a stay out to help out policy rather than an eat out to help out so if you live in peel and want to come to douglas or to ramsey you you maybe get a discounted rate in a hotel to you know to help that kind of economy because they do rely on business travel and tourism they do which is cut off isn't it yeah i mean it's difficult to see beyond this what what could happen i don't know i mean hopefully i think again working with government myself yes it's kind of, you know the summer's been good for our industry hasn't mm-hmm. it and um they've had the vat reduction the hospitality's had the vat reduction so that's helped them mm. um people are spending because what else have we got to do we're not going on holidays so people are going out for dinner or they're staying out staycations has boomed on the isle of man yeah, there's just not enough staycation yeah. places is there no um i think october might be okay november december then obviously christmas but january and february i think that's going to be that'll be a hard slot for for the island because most people do go on holiday at that point and if they haven't seen their families and you know it will be tough yeah so i think as an island if we're still covid free by that point we're going to need to have something just to kind of refocus and motivate everyone to go out so now would be a good time to think about what we're going to do yeah let's hope (laughs) it's crossed (laughs) yeah (laughs) okay well i mean you've already given me a little bit of insight but i mean if you don't mind me asking um and i do ask this in my my role as a financial planner but what's your earliest memory of money my grandmother um, and grandparents we used to always get money um so my grandparents lived off bray hill and um, where the tt races go down mm-hmm. and i can remember myself and katie my older sister getting 20 pence and we used to walk down to the shop on a saturday <laughs> morning and i think then with a quarter pence penny sweets used to maybe get four for a penny or something so we used to fill a bag and also um when we used to work the job i always wanted was counting the money with my nana so my father's mum who was the original robinsons used to sit on a round table like this and count all the money right okay um and once my sister got that job in the summer holidays it was like i'm gonna have that job next holidays (laughs) and genuinely she used to sit there and give us bags of pennies and next bag next bag go under the table and she admitted about 15 years ago she used to pull the same bag back up and just keep giving us it to count (laughs) it's it's one way to get get you over um the 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 desire that you might end up working in a bank at some point no 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 (laughs) but yeah yeah, i think it's always kind of you know our parents have it's a value of money and that's what i kind of say to my own boys now leo who's 13 and jack who's 11 
you can get on the vans. I always said I will never do what my parents did and make us work from a young age. And I'm actually doing that. Yeah. Getting them out to work. Yeah. Well, does, do you realise now, I, I, is, that, is that what you, you think really? That um... Yeah. I think it's really important. I think, you know, even businesses like ourselves now, you don't employ as young as we used to because the government's regulations and standards etc but i think it's massively important that young people do get a job a yeah, part-time job now totally but businesses won't employ young people anymore because you're so frightened of what if something goes wrong so we still do kind of 16 to 18 part-time in the shops and stuff but mm. not 13 year olds are. <laughs> oh mine do they go on the vans <laughs> well that's different their family yeah, exactly and, yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly but they um yeah, they love it. And actually, they understand what we're yeah. doing as well, what, yeah, why great. we go to work. Yeah, yeah, but they need to do it. Yeah. It's, you know, it's massively important, isn't it? Mm. I think at the minute, it's all kind of, I don't know, if they sit on their phone and say, oh, can I spend £5 on an app? They're not understanding that actual money, are they? Yeah, and how, how, you have, how hard it is earned. Yeah, it's, but yeah. I've got one child, Leo, who is a spender. Jack won't even spend a penny. <laughs> <laughs> Complete opposite. Will not touch his own money. <laughs> yeah uh, well it's um it's something i think that uh they'll they'll soon uh, get to grips with as yeah. time goes on gosh yeah yeah of all the things you've done through your life so far then what's given you the most fulfillment from both a personal and a business perspective would you say um personal obviously getting married and having the boys yeah. um yeah they're just yeah it's amazing isn't it being a mom and a wife and having a secure family and i think covid was you know, is exceptionally hard for all families, wasn't it? But I think for us, it was. It's interesting talking to people about their COVID situation. Whereas our family, myself, Ross, and the boys, Ross and I had to go to work five, six o'clock in the morning every day. We physically couldn't work from home, so we were getting up, uh, getting into work. Then one of us had dash back to get the boys up. They had online learning. They did, um, which is fine for a thirteen, fourteen-year-old, yeah. but for a ten-year-old. Yeah, it was difficult, wasn't really it? Really difficult. Mm. And he was having to log on at 8.30 every morning. So one of us had come back to do that. Then he'd be dashing back out for work. Um, and then we'd try and finish probably about 2 o'clock every day and then spend time with the boys in the afternoon. So, yeah, it, it was a tough, tough few months. And I think I've been brought up in that work is for work and our home is our kind of safe haven and I've brought the boys up in that situation and during lockdown there was no kind of boundaries at home uh, if I was working in my office at home and the kids wanted my attention as such it was it was difficult wasn't it because you mm. can't it's very hard to switch off and have different you know segregate work to home life but yeah, I, I I prefer to be back in work myself. Yeah, I'm submit. I, I I do that. It's uh, it's it is a, easier to have a separate boundary, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. And I can see how it does work for some families, but mm. um, and it did. It, obviously, we all got through it, and it did work. But I think home, just having that secure, yeah. safe haven for sure. your family, is a, and being able to switch off is a big thing. Yeah, and I mean, how did your team? cope throughout with the with oh my god unbelievable like because again you, you said it you ha had to go in the yeah food supply is key yeah <laughs> i mean it's a really weird situation isn't it so again very very early on government had said stay home stay safe essential retailers to stay open but we weren't given any guidelines of what to do what to tell our team how to feel etc they just said you've got to do two meters duh, 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 duh. so I sit on um, the Retail Chamber of Commerce and myself, Andy Corrie, which is the co-op, Neil from Tesco's, Ross from Marks and Spencer's and Amanda from ShopRite and Des from EVF. We kind of set up a WhatsApp group and obviously Tesco's, M&S and co-op were ahead of the game because yeah. they were seeing what was happening in the UK. And the yes, UK boards as well. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and they were getting fed what yes. to do. Yeah. And all of a sudden, yes, you're all competitors, but you actually become a support network for each other. So we had this WhatsApp group where we were just helping each other and suggestions and where could we get more masks? Where could we build the Perspex screens? Um, or there was a sudden change coming in the UK, so let's be ahead of it. Um, so that massively helped. But Yeah, that's really great. Um, I don't know. Yeah, this, our team was just amazing. Not one person ever said... I'm not coming to work. I mean, obviously there was a few that had to for health reasons. So it was your priority is to make sure they're safe at home. Yeah. Um, there was one lady who 
is 70 and she works for us and obviously one of the announcement was 70 and above you have to isolate and she said well, I'm not isolating I don't want to why should I isolate why are they discriminating against me yeah. and for her it was difficult because the government wouldn't give her Mira because of her age but then they were telling her you can't go to work so <laughs> we had to say you're going to have to isolate that's what the legislation is but everyone just kind of heads down came into work if they didn't feel they could come to work fine but we just didn't have that and it's interesting we were talking about it in the office the other day and I you know you do suddenly feel guilty thinking oh god you know maybe we shouldn't have had them in work etc but if we had a very open conversation and a couple of the girls said but mental health wise it helped them to come to work every day and have a structure in place yeah. they felt safe they were interacting with people and they just carried on working and they were happy with that they'd go home as normal so yeah it, it, that's why i think there's just different situations for different yeah. businesses whereas we've just been kind of quite normal really yeah no, no, and absolutely and, and, you know testament to you and the team that you came through it so well and oh god we got there didn't we <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you have and continue to do so, which is great. Yeah, I mean, no, so is that, is that probably the most, um, don't let me put words in your mouth, but you know, the, fr- from a business perspective, what's been the most fulfilling thing in your career so far? Oh, I, I think surviving COVID so far, isn't it, touch wood? It's, I think looking back, there's so many different things. We've had huge kind of IT changes and, you know, be, again, being a family business, if I if I turn around and said, I want to build a building for a million pounds or half a million pounds, you can physically see that building being built. But when it comes to IT, well, where is it? I can't, <laughs> what's happening? What, what, why can't I see it? Yeah. And trying to constantly reassure, you know, the shareholders of your business that this money is being well spent. So we had, we did an IT change about three years ago and it was a full system change. And that was a lot of hard work, 18 months in the run up to it, a lot of training with the staff. And that's been a amazing kind of change to the business. It's made us more efficient. And would you have been able to cope as well had you not done that IT change? No. Yeah. They, no, it speaks and, for itself, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, I mean, that, that's what's been able... You know, we adapted so quickly during COVID. You can switch the websites, you can change your product yeah, ranges. you notice that, how fast it was changing. Yeah, and yeah. you're able to cope with online orders yeah. all of a sudden, like you say, open the... the Just the, open the floodgates yeah, as such. Yeah, open the main... Um, like, what, what was the site the wholesalers the wholesale website open, open yeah. that open to the public so we would never have done anything no. like that but yeah I think um, god it's yeah there's so many things every day there's something though isn't there and you know I always say it's not me that does the hard work I'll just kind of steer the ship in the direction with Matty and Ross and then it's everybody else that works hard isn't it yeah, yeah. you know they're you know we have we're open pretty much 24 hours a day seven days a week <laughs> It's a long hours business. <laughs> yes, yes. I think anybody who's ever been up there can uh, can tell you that. You almost get run over by the number yeah. of forks and trucks. Going, and go, and well, yeah, no, not yeah. those. They're very safe. <laughs> <laughs> but going around the the, the, the retail floor and you, you've got yeah. all the guys going around with their headsets with the on headset, and the yeah. boxes. Yeah. So that that was a huge kind of um, addition to the IT change was headsets, voice mm. pick technology, which is a similar concept to what Amazon would use, and it will send the picker to the fastest route throughout the warehouse to pick products so that's been massively efficient for us so you can you can add on an extra 100 orders a day and you would not need any more staff to do that gosh so it was amazing yeah so great. when it's quiet you panic and you think get more orders in yeah <laughs> cool so um for any aspiring or, or existing even business owner uh, or entrepreneur what would be your number one business tip Ooh. I think thinking ahead, isn't it? Always kind of don't focus on the now all the time. Um, an example, actually, again, we're just talking about COVID, aren't we? I kind of remember waking up that first few days, just panicking, thinking, oh my God, we've got 200 people. Like We've got to pay them. It's not just about them. It's their families to feed, etc. cetera. Um, and one of the divisions of that was the floristry centre, which we have. Um, is that classed as essential? Is it classed as non-essential? We weren't sure. Um, there's about 20 people that work in that department. We're going to have to temporarily lay them off and shut that department down. So it was being proactive, getting in touch with government, um, asking them, well, actually, it is essential because, unfortunately, 
people are going to pass away. People are going to have still have birthdays. It's people's mental health and their well-being. You know, sending a gift to somebody is hugely important. So they said, as long as the social distance is in place and you've got the network for um, deliveries rather than collections, that's fine. So we have two re- uh, websites for the flowers. We have Robinson's Flowers, which is on Ireland, and then we have posterrose.co.uk, yeah. which is nationwide. Um, the whole of the UK floristry shut down. Nobody could get flowers around the UK. So we were still buying out of Holland from our main growers who would be ringing us saying, you've got trunkers of flowers coming in. Is this correct? Because nobody in the UK is taking flowers. Yep, that's for us. And the post rows boomed because all of a sudden people realised, well, I can send flowers or a hamper, an Isle of Man gift hamper to somebody. And it was making them feel better or possibly they needed funeral flowers or... Yeah people were still kind of living their lives aren't they so even though the uk had shut down you were still still sending able to get the flowers over flowers six days a week around the uk that's amazing yeah so which was brilliant because we use royal mail which is uh, via the isle of man post office so if you ordered up to three o'clock you'd get that delivered to the door by nine nine thirty the next day so it was brilliant so actually we kept that whole department open and that department has actually grown from covid because we've got a better name again now on google as yeah. such if you were able to yeah. deliver when no one else could yeah but i think yeah just kind of always looking ahead isn't it and being confident in what you're doing yeah. I, I liked what you said before about the collaboration with, with oh. who'd have thought about tesco and m&s and i know but yeah. collaborating with little old isle of man business i know not, don't, don't no, mean I know. It, exactly it, it, exactly why would they care about yeah. and it's and i think that goes again to the kind of isle of man is collaboration is really important mm. because like to the local producers just come and talk to us you know we're happy to stock and list for us we're a logistics of the food industry so we're delivering 900 a thousand orders a day to all the different outlets somebody produces honey as an example well, we can take that honey from you and deliver it we'll pay that producer straight away and we take the risk of not selling it not selling it or mm. not being paid etc and we'll distribute it for them yeah. so yeah it's just um so it's like a food assembly, really. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. And we, we always want to sell local products yeah. and have a local offering. Yeah. Do you um, do you collaborate much with the NFU, the, the Farmers Union? Or? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We, I mean, yeah. All sorts. We sell tons of stuff. So our main kind of growers for um, vegetables is like Stuart Allenson, the yeah. Neil Brothers, Starvey Farms, um, Laxey Mills. We're a big customer of Isle of Man Creameries. We deliver their wholesale products, Ramsey Bakery, Davison's mm. Ice Cream. Yeah. So there's loads and loads yeah. and you know that's what makes us unique as an island isn't mm. it having our own kind of producers it is you're not going to say for tesco's sake you're not going to say well we can't stock the isle of man stuff because we've got to sell this uk yeah stuff. and it's hugely important isn't it for people mm. to understand kind of where the food's coming from as well I think. totally yeah no i agree great so um so Jana, what do you um what do you do to relax how do you keep your life in balance and you're not getting up at six o'clock in the morning and then coming yeah. back to get, make sure the boys are logged on for Microsoft Teams. Oh, and no. <laughs> God, I know. Um, exercise, love getting out, yeah. um, walking, love walking the dog. And just, well, my husband always says I'm too sociable. I need to not be so sociable. Because <laughs> I just love, I love being around people and my friends and family and work and yeah, I think, but holiday, holidays, we're big holiday goers. The only way for us you, to kind of were, really switch off. You were big holiday goers. Yeah. Oh God, it's, this is literally my worst nightmare. <laughs> I think it's hard because we're on an island and we've got so many kind of outlets and places we supply. Getting away on holiday is the only time really you can try and just have some downtime and switch off so i completely get it it's all right <laughs> yeah and that's where this yeah. summer's been hard yeah it's a, i mean we're actually talking about we might go to guernsey in october after just to go on a plane somewhere <laughs> but i oh know it might be a little bit warmer there you never know yeah possibly possibly but yeah traveling love traveling yeah absolutely love where it. do you see where do you see as top of your tree to go as soon as we can Maldives it's my 40th on it the 7th of January and that's oh. where we were meant to be <laughs> so gosh really so is that not ca- gonna happen though. has it been cancelled yet then not yet no not yet no you never know I know it's a miracle cure It'd be good but love skiing um, yeah 
just love being away. Just love being yeah. away as a family, really. And just, where do you ski? Where's the... um, well, last year we were in Leger and the year before Leger and Alpe d'Huez. So France mostly. Yeah. But um, I'm quite lucky. My dad is 70, but he still skis and water skis. And, you know, we still kind of go on the big family holidays. So there's three sisters um, yeah. with me and the all the cousins and everything so it's lovely gosh i know so it's a we call it the hashtag family of 15 <laughs> right, and it's usually me arranging it all <laughs> but yeah cool. just i think all just being away together mm. isn't it yeah and enjoying life no but no absolutely yeah i think the best holidays we've had is when we've met you know people we know there yeah. which is it's probably not the point is it to go away and see but when you go with people that you, yeah and i think we you relax. know like and trust yeah, you know exactly. it's nice too isn't it exactly so it'd be nice yeah. fingers crossed if we yeah. can all get away soon yeah i know but well, then we're safe here, so that's yes, good we thing. are. We are. So tell me, what do you think are the best things about living in the Isle of Man? Oh, it's just beautiful, isn't it? It's yeah. just you know, I think as when you're younger, you thrive to be away, don't you? You can't wait to get off the rock, as we call it, <laughs> and go to university. That's or kind travel. of just what you said. <laughs> yeah, and now it's you know, I I don't know, it's. It's interesting, isn't it? You suddenly get to a certain age and you maybe want to start a family or settle down or start a business or something. And you just naturally, there's always a pull, I think, with the Isle of Man to come back, isn't there? Definitely. Um, it's, well, look at us. The rest of the world, you know, on Saturday, uh, our eldest was in a big rugby tournament. There's nowhere else in the whole of the UK no, that's, that's doing right. this. No, we, I went to watch the, the Vagabonds ladies yeah. were playing Guernsey. Yes. Gave them an absolute kicking. Yeah, amazing, isn't do, it? Do you, do you kick someone in rugby? I'm not sure what's this. They, they beat them, what is it, 60-something? <laughs> oh, my goodness. 24, I think. 68, no, 75, 20 or something oh like that. Oh, my God. Yeah. But nowhere else is doing this. Yeah. And, you know, we'd, I think the borders has been a big thing, hasn't it? Been able to lock down and, you know, our, our kids are lucky, aren't they? They absolutely really, are. Really, I don't know. I mean, they don't really comprehend what's going on, though, do they? And... <laughs> No. And do you want oh, them to? can we go to Colorado? Yeah, I well. know. <laughs> Not just yet. No. <laughs> I really want to go. You've only just gone back to school. Yeah. <laughs> they suck it up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you know how long the holidays are as well. It's... <sighs> I know when you've still got to work, even though you're on holidays, yeah, I know this... Um... It's long. <laughs> yes. Yeah, if anyone had said last year you can have 27 weeks of your children at home and two weeks in between with them going back to school, you think, no, that'll never happen. Yeah. We've survived it. <laughs> we have. But I think just having the kids back to school um, with no social distancing, playing sport, it's unbelievable, isn't it? And that's mm. where, how can you not love the Isle of Man for that? No. We're yeah. lucky we live here, I think. Yeah, we are. I'm really agree. lucky. And it's a great place to do business, isn't it? Yeah. Things like this today, you know, me meeting people and making relationships with people. And I think also, again, referring back to the COVID, being able to pick up the phone to the chief minister or the finance minister or the enterprise minister and actually picking up the phone and having a conversation and saying, help, I need your help here. Mm. How can you help my business? It's unique, isn't it? Mm. You can't do that anywhere else. I wouldn't think so. No, no. So, yeah, it's a great place to do business, isn't yeah, it? It is. So, um, so what would you say the main challenges then that the Isle of Man faces? Because we covered a few, haven't we? Yeah, gosh. The borders. Yep. How are we going to get tourism back? I mean, the airlines, it's obviously going to be a huge kind of, where's that going to be? Don't know. So we've got our boat. Yeah, <laughs> that's the good. We've got the new, boat's the big one. The new one on the way. Yes, and I mean that's the kind of that's the lifeline to the yeah. Isle of Man. The steam yeah. packet does an unbelievable job. People might complain about the prices, but that's what keeps products coming in and out of the Isle of Man, and that's our lifeline, isn't it? Yeah. If that boat goes down, or yeah. we didn't have the steam packet, we'll be back to eating what Stuart Allenson yeah. makes. Yeah, producers. exactly, <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, it, it's massively important. I yeah. think just trying to kind of encourage people to shop local and support local as much as possible spend yeah. their money with local businesses yeah so what solutions and opportunities can you see then if i mean i know about you with one hat you've also you're a non-exec director on the department for enterprise yeah. business agency aren't yeah. you so i just think i mean me personally i just think you know if i'm spending my money locally why don't we have some kind of incentive to do that i don't know you maybe get a voucher when you've spent a certain amount in between different local stores or I don't know, it's just something, isn't it? I think people really need... Do people really understand why it's so important to shop locally? How that kind of money effect is? 
you know, for ourselves, if we brought potatoes as an example in from the UK, well, no one's really benefiting from that, just our business, isn't it? It's all the growers and what's next. And I hate to say it, but if you eat at McDonald's, they don't buy anything local no. product wise. Yes, they're employing local people, but just their wrappers litter our countryside. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you know, what sort of person does that? They're not using local meat for their <laughs> yeah. burgers. No. Um, is it a locally owned business? Are the profits staying on the island? I mean, I always use the example of, say, Cycle 360. Look at that. That's built from local money. Mm. Um, it's a local business. The profits will stay on the Isle of Man. It's employing local. It's spending local. But then if you use a franchise... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's... No, yeah. no, no, it's good. No, I know, I know, I know it's part <laughs> of the... to get that out. Yeah, yeah. No. I, know, I know it's part of your, um, the family business too, and yeah. it's, it's, it's actually a great place. It re- it re- when I go in and sit down, it reminds me of um, of a, you know, similar sort of facility in Colorado where oh, we, we like to go. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's definitely um, kind of different, isn't it, from yeah, the it Isle is. of Man? Yeah, it's, 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 yeah, it is definitely different. Yeah. And I think my cousin's... Um, a couple of them came back during lockdown as lockdown happened. One of them actually um, is a lawyer and the other one works um, in funding in London. Mm -hmm. And they'd moved out of London when London was locking down. And then my auntie and uncle rang the two boys and said, look, are you going to come back to the Isle of Man? They're going to shut the borders tomorrow. You've literally got 12 hours to make your decision and we'll get you on the last boat. So Nick and his girlfriend said, right we're, we're coming back to the Isle of Man get us on the last boat so they booked the boat for them it was two of us in a car drove to Haysham with a last car on that boat to get back to the Isle of Man Start, started to um, sail off to the Isle of Man and Tash went oh my god Nick we've drove on in the hire car and they'd oh. hired a car to <laughs> <laughs> they just hadn't even thought. They were in such a rush to get back to the Isle of Man. So did the car get shipped back okay? Nope. They had to go back with it about three weeks ago. It's been sat here since March. Oh, my goodness. Mm. But it's interesting. Um, <laughs> How much did that cost? <laughs> a lot. I think it may, they may as well have probably bought it. Okay. But um, the two cousins that did come back, obviously yeah. being from different sort of sectors as such, they're both really keen now to probably come back and live here that's um, good it's been such a brain drain from this yeah. place for the last 50 years probably yeah i think they they always thought they were years off doing it but now they're kind of actually it's not the be all and end all to live in london city or you know they're ready to come back and they're still quite young yeah so it, it, it is a young place it used to be london but yeah not so much now when you get kids and that so. yeah and i think also it's just kind of with everything that's gone on this last six months isn't it yeah certainly made a lot of people reassess where they are and where they want yeah. to be i think yeah well yeah. good if it's um you know we've lived here kind of our, our whole lives so I know, far exactly you know. exactly <laughs> ethnic minorities in our own right <laughs> whereas god my kids are kind of desperate yeah. to go the other side now yeah but yes they'll learn <laughs> what was it I, it was a it was a thought for the day on uh, radio four there's a glass part <laughs> glass glass half full glass half empty actually you should just be grateful you've got a glass <laughs> yeah exactly especially at the minute yeah and i think that again that goes back to always being positive isn't it you know yeah. There's a big thing, like people will always say to me at work, you're always so happy and you're always smiling and don't bring your sh- to work for everybody else. You know, you've got to kind of, you have to be, if you're, there's a big thing about how you are will pass off quite quickly, isn't it? Yeah. And it's a good tip. Yeah. I think yeah. you just have to be Face positive. The world with yeah. A smile. Yeah. 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 Good. So what have you got planned next? So. Other than going to the Maldives, if you can't, well, if you can't, oh. but you know, it's, it's not going to happen. No, it isn't. <laughs> but what have you got planned next? To, you know, for Robinsons, what's 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 next? For We've that? got a new business that's going to launch. Oh right, okay. It's meant to be about four weeks off. It's taking a little bit longer than we thought. Keep an eye out for a website called Freshbox.im. Oh, wonderful! <laughs> so that's all I'll say. <laughs> about time. Yes, Can I say that's all I'll say? Uh, yeah, no good. That's uh... um, yeah. So it's taking longer than we thought to kind of come together. Um, it's not going to be a like for like offering with another similarly box named scheme. <laughs> yes. But um yeah, it will help a lot of families and people. Yeah. And... Somebody can chop my ginger. Yeah, Excellent. Exactly. Nice you know, one. it's trying to just kind of again, it, you know, people want convenience, don't they? Yeah. Um they want ease. But they want healthy as well and yes, nutritional. Exactly. And sometimes if you've got to start some, from scratch, it's it's a step too far for some people who've been yeah. working hard all day. Yeah. 
And I think for our kind of business, you know, Instagram, um, Facebook, social media is massive. People love food blogging. And I do it myself. I'd sit on my phone at lunchtime. What am I going to cook tonight? Go on a, a page. Oh, I'm going to cook that tonight. Well, you're you're probably, but you could just snap outside exactly. and get what just you want. Go and grab yeah. everything. Yeah. Jordan, yeah. Can I <laughs> give us some fish? fish. <laughs> and yeah. that's it. I think we've all yeah. got busy lives, haven't we? we have, so, yeah. And also, again, with lockdown, people want something nice for dinner, don't they? If, they, if yeah. they've had a hard day at home with the kids at home and working from home, you just want to be able to have a nutritious, healthy yeah. meal, isn't it? I'm excited. That sounds great. I know. Ah, wonderful. <laughs> so have you got any books that you've recently read? Just to go completely on the questions that some of our listeners like to know. We always ask people these questions. What yeah. is, what's your favourite book? What have Ooh. you read recently? Well, actually, I've got one sat on my desk, with it, which uh, Tim Groves from Black Grace Cowley dropped me off during COVID. That's still sat on my desk. Yeah, it's, it's, it's supposed to be self-development, not shelf oh, development. Know. Just so I you know. know, it's terrible, isn't it? Um, yeah, I'm not a massive, massive reader. I've read all like the chimp paradox, things like that. Yeah. Um, brilliant. But I'm kind of just very much live in the moment. Just, yeah. Okay. Afraid bit Netflix then. Oh, no, I'm not a big telly watcher. Don't watch telly. I'm Don't really bored. Books. It's because I never stop. I Fa- literally just never stop. Favourite food, food blogger? Oh. See, I follow recipe books. So Sabrina Geiner and um, Ottolonghi. Oh, yeah, Ottolonghi. Love Lange. them. Yeah, yeah. Love them. And he's just brought out a new um, book called Simple. Yes. So I follow that and I literally use those books constantly. Glad you mentioned that. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's very oh, good. Yeah. And really healthy, just lovely yummy food isn't it feel good good. food it is favorite quote (laughs) oh i'm gonna laugh now this is from my father a woman's liver is only half the size of a man's so don't drink as much (laughs) i know (laughs) that's dull (laughs) and um what else does oh god oh i don't know (laughs) on the spot now aren't i (laughs) takes all sorts to make a world does take all sorts that's a good one Okay, yeah, takes all. Right, and that's Jana. a John Hostiles quote as yes. well. <laughs> Your name, Janet, is that is that Dutch? Um, I have no idea. It is Dutch because it's actually in our family tree book. Okay, so it would be Jana then, not Jana. Yeah, yeah. but I know I'm Jana. Yeah. I get called all sorts. I bet, yeah. yeah. And I've only ever met, um, I worked in the ski village, the snow village in Sheffield when I was at university. And I used to have to do the logging in, the checking in. And I, I can still remember it. And this lady came up and she said, oh, uh, Jana Fox. And I said, oh, is that J-A-N-A? And she said, no, no, it's J-A-N-N-A. People always say that. And I said, oh, that's my name too. And she'd never met anyone. And she was 1981, the same year as me. Wow, they are. So I thought, oh. And apparently it was a news, uh, a weather reader was had the name. And that's when my mum had seen it. Oh, right. So it was nothing to do with her. No, Dutch nothing to do with then. Dutch. No. Oh, well, there we are. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so where can people go to learn all about you, more about you on social media? And- so, um, so we have a Robinson's Facebook page. I can't mm. even think what the link's called. It's all right. We'll put it in the show notes, don't we? Yeah. And then Robinson's.im. And you're on Insta- Instagram as well, aren't you? Yeah. Instagram would just be, I think, Robinson's... I-O-M, I think. I-O-M, yeah. yeah. And Twitter as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Fine. And the website with all the details of how to order online. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just a quickie, though, for, for a lot of um, people who, who, like you mentioned, were vulnerable in COVID. And yeah. How, if, if you're not online, how how do you get, have you got a telephone yeah, service? Yeah, you can ring 690000 and right. speak to the tele sales. Yeah. And the tele sales are brilliant. They can place the order for you and yeah. take the payment online. Nice. Um, and then if you order up to, I think it's 1 p.m., it's for example today you'll get that delivery the next day that's really good yeah so it's kind of next day delivery that's really, really. Good. yeah but, oh, well that's that's uh, that's really great um i mean i don't know if there's anything else you wanted to to say but um you there's know. always so much isn't there? There really drive off and you go oh. well, we've, we've covered a load i mean you know it's it's been really great having you on today oh, Jana. thank you uh, thanks so much for coming and sharing the story i mean it's uh it's it's been an amazing business that you've oh. that you've supported the island community and yeah um, yeah, and I think yeah, I think it's just it's food, isn't it? Food's ever changing and <sighs> essential. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. And I think what we have learned this last, like you say, this last eight months is it's essential and people need it. Mm. And not everyone needs so much pasta <laughs> yeah, or loo rolls. Oh no, oh, my God, loo rolls! Oh my I lo- I God! Loved, I loved when it were, when I was able to go in the store again. I think somebody had built an arch out yeah, of, of loo, loo rolls. rolls. That was so funny. <laughs> Yes. Well, on that note. Yeah. <laughs> but it's funny, they've started, it yeah. started 
picking up again. It's weird. Right. I think people are thinking they're going to probably isolate a bit more over winter. Yeah. And actually the home deliveries have picked up again. Right. So people probably, maybe it's people with health reasons or just fear, isn't it? I think yeah. people yeah. are just a bit worried about what to do. Yeah. But the the supply chain, uh, you've, you've already shown it, it's... It's 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 sustainable. And yeah, people shouldn't, shouldn't do the mad panic. I shouldn't panic. People shouldn't panic. No, yeah. I think you know, and that's what we kind of all as re, all retailers as such tried to get that message out very early on. Stop yeah. panicking. There's enough to go around, and yeah. yeah, I think I think I think we I think we've all learnt from it, and yeah. uh, I think you've set a great example. So thanks very much. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this episode of Island Influencers from Thornton Chartered Financial Planners. To find out more and for useful links, visit thorntonfs.com slash podcasts.